Greetings all, it's Max and we are back. How did the snake lose its legs? Hmm, hmm. I think I'm going to be doing this little series on um, really quick Bible things where science is sort of catching up to things that are already in the Bible. And this one came up um, for some reason, I believe, on Drudge Report, even though this study is a couple of years old. They determined actually that the snakes at one time had legs. Hmm, I wonder why. Snakes are elongated carnivorous reptiles of the suborder Serpentes. Their most distinctive feature is the lack of appendages. Snakes are legless, so they move by slithering ahead, dragging and pulling their bodies across the ground. Apparently, in case people didn't know what a snake was. Right. Now, if a tail is the essential characteristic of the body of an animal, you must ask where does the snake's body end and its tail begin? This is comical, yet a very profound philosophical problem, if you ask me. But let's not dwell any further on it. Instead, on a far more serious note, we should focus on... Uh, is the question of why snakes lost their legs in the first place. See, there must have been a creationist scientist somewhere in here that's like, well, the Bible says that uh, snakes lost their legs. Let's go take a look and see what we find out. The question essentially asked, why would nature deem this regression? See, they actually acknowledge the fact that having legs is better than not having legs, or than having legs. Why does nature deem, nature deem this regression better for survival than having limbs like other reptiles? The dexterity would make burrowing far easier than it would be without a pair of forelimbs. One groundbreaking paper claims that prehistoric snakes did possess limbs, albeit very thin ones. They gradually lost them due to certain energy constraints. This means that they didn't eat enough, right? This is how what evolutionists will go to. The snakes did not eat enough, therefore they lost their legs. Yeah. Later, we will learn how these constraints imposed this regression and arrested the growth of the limbs at the phase of manufacturing itself at the level of genes. So essentially what happens here is the snakes have the genes and everything for making legs, but the gene is turned off. And they can put this gene in other animals and things and they make them grow legs. Hmm. This is what made them decide that the snakes at any point in time had legs. Had to have been some sort of creationist guy in there saying, well, the Bible says this, well, let's go take a look at it. Because otherwise, why would you even look? Right? Right. We'll take a look at the Bible, Genesis 3. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yea, hath God said, and yea, not eat of any tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. <clears throat> so here, there is no other, serpent cannot be misconstrued as anything other than snake. Okay, So Satan was possessing a snake, or in the form of a snake, or something to that effect. Serpent. This is what, what it is. And here the snake is talking. And he apparently did, um, at one point, he was walking around. Slither walking or something. As we go down to um, verse 14 here. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above all beasts of the field. Upon, the, upon thy belly thou uh, shalt thou go, and the dust you shall eat the days of thy life. So they weren't slithering on the ground at some point. Because if, if that was the curse, on the belly you shall go. If they were already slithering around in the ground, not much of a curse. So that's what the Bible has to say about it. And uh, we go back to to this article here. They are, they are now deciding that, yeah, snakes had legs at one point. And, um, of course, they're attributing mutation as being this wonderful thing that um, made the snake lose its legs. And they do call it de-evolution because all mutations... And as far as science goes and biology goes, are negative. There is no such thing as a positive mutation in the genome. So what we're going to do here is cover a couple more paragraphs or in this in this article, and maybe glance at a couple other articles that are up. And uh, yeah, here we go. A highly elegant study revealed that the snake genome does possess genes for limb genesis and growth. <laughs> they put genesis in there. But tiny mutations in DNA located near a gene pivotal to limbed architecture and growth prevented the gene from ever activating in the first place. Uh, I don't know about that. Consequently, changing their appearance forever. Um, 
This illustrates the scintillating butterfly effect, where a tiny variation transmutes to a consequential difference. Here we really got to push this evolution stuff. Really got to push it. Oh, just this little change makes consequential huge differences. Yeah, ain't going to get life from non-life out of that, but okay. The study highlights the spectacular vicissitudes that a single genetic mutation can induce. Zoologists claim this regression, again, not a good thing, might have been sprung into action some 150 million years ago. So that's what they guess. Um, Martin Cohn is the guy and his assistant who were doing this. I actually looked these people up. They don't appear to be uh, Christians, but you never know. They call it the hedgehog gene. Pretty funny. Uh, this is all talking about geneticist stuff. Yeah, researchers then attempted to test this enhancer, this effectively a gene, on uh, mouse limbs to foresee its effects on the growth of their limbs. Uh, researchers uh, did a gene editing technique to replace a rodent's own enhancer with enhancers of other animals and ones of a snake. And effectively, they made the mouse uh, grow limbs with using the enhancer from a snake. Kind of neat. Kind of neat. But I could have told them the snakes at one point in time had, uh, had legs because the Bible says so. Um, Genesis was written and put together by Moses in 1500 BC, and that was events that took place well before that, a couple thousand years before that. Um, last paragraph, however, scientists are still uncertain whether this uh, tweak can be deemed the single monumental mutation that in induced the trend of limblessness in lizards and facilitated their evolution into snakes. Evolution into snakes. They They just actually just told us that they were lizards that had a mutation and regressed because they lost their legs. They believe this mutation might not be the sole per perpetrator, but is certainly a major actor in the unfolding drama. For now, the common ancestor of all snakes still lurks in the shadows, elusive and reluctant to be identified, as is all. <laughs> as are all common ancestors between any of the classes of animals. Oh, these guys are funny. Anyways, like I said, I'm going to, I like doing the little science things and, and uh, poking my finger in the eye of science when it just blatantly supports the Bible. And the how did snakes lose its legs? There are several articles um, that recently came up and when they were like on a Drudge Report, which is just kind of like a, a link headline page uh, yesterday. So I don't know why this being a two-year-old study was on there. But yeah, there are several articles about if anyone wants to check it out. And pretty much snakes had legs. You'll come up with a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. So I know what I know what mutation happened to the snakes. The old poor snakes messed with God, and God messed them up, and that's what happened. <laughs> with that, we're gonna be out here.